What's going on, guys? Um, welcome to this dope stream. I got obviously the great man Paul Acuria next to me. Uh, we'll be answering, or well, not will be, because I don't really know a lot, but he'll be answering uh, your questions, anything you know that he can answer, of course, um, about the about the club. Um, We'll wait for a couple more people to jump on. I've got some people lined up. But also, if you can't uh, jump on um, and talk via video, you can also put them in the chat. Um, I've got some questions on Twitter as well that, that we'll chuck up there. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so slowly, slowly, slowly. I've put it all on Twitter and uh, Instagram and stuff. So, um, yeah, incredible. How you been, man? Good, man. Yeah, this is, this is the first time I've done something like this, so looking forward to it. So, uh, and um, just want to say, I've always said it as a player and as a supporter of the club too. Just, just to thank everyone for the support that you guys have given this football club for so many years. I mean, we're, we're all pretty fortunate to be part of it. Um, yeah, so really excited. All right, so. Beautiful. Yeah, so it's starting to starting to creep up, starting to creep up. I'll just post that. So I just posted the I just posted the link to jump on by um, by video. So that's up right now. Someone asked, uh, <laughs> "Where's the baby oil for all those for all those pipes?" <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I've um, no, I've, there's some weights here. Mate. I've got to get back into the gym. Actually, it's pretty fit for summer. Oh. So, uh, all right. So we'll chuck on Lockie first. So Lockie's from uh, Twitter. So add him to the stream. Uh, can you hear me, mate? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. How do I sound? Yeah, beautiful, mate. We can we can hear. Hello, hey, Lockie. Easy. Yeah, going well. We are going very well. Um, absolute pleasure to meet you, mate. I just want to say before I yeah, start, okay. um, thank you to Luke. And to yourself for giving us this opportunity. It's absolutely unreal. Um, just goes to show, like, the times that we live in, um, what we can do. It's pretty pretty amazing. Um, yeah, I've been a Collingwood, you know, supporter and member for 20 years. Um, some of my earliest memories of my dad probably carrying me up Bridge Road um, to the G, you know, to watch yourself play. And then as a young lad, you know, admiring you. And even in business now, I'm studying at the moment. And um, it's pretty pretty awesome to see what you've done over over such a amazing career so yeah thank you very much i'm a little bit nervous but um <laughs> no, mate. Um, very, no, look, very I, happy to be here you're a good man I, I uh i've got a lot of those memories too and, and you're right mate. i want to thank luke and and other sort of Collingwood people though who who you know via instagram or, or facebook or social media twitter but just to be able to, to provide the content that I know you do and, and others is yeah. awesome. And, and I follow them as well. And, and uh, it's a good laugh. I, I see, see some, some, some good little stories that, re that, you know, that reminds me of so many great memories in the past. So thanks to, yeah. to all of you. No, absolutely. Um, I, I listened recently to the Pie Hard, Pie Hard podcast um, that you did and it was it absolutely fantastic. I think it was really revealing and really reassuring to a lot of us members. Um, as I'm sure you know, it's been – a pretty tumultuous time for the club. Yeah. Um, you know, we've obviously had, you know, a bit of drama, a bit of controversy, which is probably synonymous with Collingwood. But, you know, I just wanted to ask you, mate, um, I was originally probably for an EGM. Um, as I've learned and, you know, got yeah. to know more about footy, um, I, was, I was quite concerned with the operations of the club. However, the decisions that you guys have made, and I give all credit to you, over the over recent months, especially this season, um, it would have been extremely difficult, and it's definitely swung my opinion, and I know a lot of other members as well. Yeah. Um, you know, mate, I, I just wanted to ask, especially, I think this next decade for Collingwood is probably one of our most crucial in recent history. Um, I think it's it can probably either go one of two ways: we, you know, push forward, like you said, and have success over the next twenty years, or you know, we slip into a bit of mediocrity. Um, you know, I just wanted to, to know what, what are the plans that the club are implementing? What are we looking to do to ensure the next five to ten years are going to be successful for us? Yeah, no, mate, really good question. And I've said it sort of a couple of times now. Well, first of all, I think, you know, the, the club needed to be – we need to be really honest with ourselves and, and where we're at yeah. right now. Um, 
you know, and, and I've said it a few times now and listened to a lot of the members. You know, I, I think we need to just drop the ego a bit and we're actually not as good yeah. as what we, we are. You know, we won two flags in 60-odd years. Um, yeah. It could have been eight, you know, flags. Um, But also, you know, because we were once at the club that, you know, the best facilities, you know, and, and top four sides regularly, you know, and all that sort of stuff. And But if you look at the past at Collingwood, we haven't really been able to secure a big name player, and which really surprises me a little bit, particularly with, with you know, the, the club and and and, uh, and where it's at. So, so yeah, for us to, to have that 20 years of success and, 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 and uh, win five flags, um, we, we need to, yeah, need to be honest with ourselves and, and, and not rebuild, but just build you know, the foundations that's going to provide that for the football club. Let's not let's not try to buy a flag. Um, let, let's let's build the success that's going to give our players and our coaching staff the best opportunity to be the best we possibly can be. And I'm really excited about it. You know, it's it's a big change for us. You know, we've yeah, you know, over the last twelve months, obviously Eddie McGuire's gone and 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 Nathan Buckley's gone. When I say gone. I'll still be around. This guy's a big con of people, right? And and um, so two big names, but it's a it's a good opportunity for us to 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 really build those foundations to give us the success of the next twenty. And 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 I'm with you. It's a it's a big uh, the next few years are, are massive for us. But yep. I don't think we're far off it, to be honest. Because no, I don't think so either. Yeah, you know, even our list right now, we've got a really good list. And the beauty about you know, if you look at a positive of this year in terms of on-field performances, we'll have five or six guys that will play a total of 50-odd games this year, which is really important for us. Because what that does for these guys is it gives them, it gives them, you know, uh, that, that experience that over the pre-season, they know how hard it is and how hard they need to work to be even better players. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree with you. And I think yeah. Luke reached out to me earlier in the week because I do tweet about you a lot. Um, <laughs> I compare you to Brendan Gale almost at Richmond. I think they were in a similar position about 10 years ago where they said they came out and they were bold and they said, you know what, we're not as good as we think we are, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And they set out their plan and they executed. Um, so, yeah. you know, that I think for me there's a lot of upside. Um, and, you know, I'm, I've got all faith in you guys. Like bringing in Graham Wright, that, that yeah. threw me off. I was like, wow, that was – that's a great appointment. Like I was honestly stunned. Um, yeah. You know, are we in a position to execute that? Do you think? Like, do you think we realistically can be challenging for a flag in the next decade? Mate, hundred percent, absolutely, absolutely, mate. I, yeah. Not just one. I, I think a few. Like, you know, so I'll just take it to, back to to the righty appointment. Well, we had to really. I think it, and and I don't think we've done this. You know, and no disrespect to anyone, but I think at the club, you know, over the past sort of five. To ten years, um, we, like the detail behind really pulling apart where our gaps have been, and what come up. Obviously, what come up after last year was was our was our salary cap. So mm -hmm. it was like who is who's who's sort of the best in the business, who's got the most experience with the TPP. Yeah, excuse me. Um, let, let's go and get him. And, and obviously, Wrighty being, you know, I I I used to love Graham Wright when, as a player. So to be able to have the opportunity to first meet, you know, sit in front of me and meet him, so I'd never had before. Um, and to bring his level of experience to the footy club, and he's a ripper. He's so good. He's, he's very, he's very measured. Um, you know, it doesn't have you know the whole the, the profile, but but um, just knows he knows his footy so well. So it's been really good to be working with him. Um, mm. Yeah, look, I, I think you know I'm not just saying that for us we can win the five in the next twenty. I, I honestly believe it. You know, it's really exciting where we're at at the moment. Um, I think so too. And you said yeah. you, you, the thing that you said about dropping the ego, like I, I along with many Collingwood supporters, had yeah. to readjust my expectations. Um, you know, I think I was unrealistic in saying we'll probably be a top eight side this season. You know, obviously we get, we're one eyed. We want to be optimistic. Yeah. But you know, I think I think we are the biggest club in the country. Obviously, we haven't had the success, but I think a lot of people view us as that. And I think. Yeah. We we have the ability to be a powerhouse again. So yeah, all yeah. the trust in you guys. All the trust in you guys. Thank you, mate. Look, and and you know, if you remember from probably I'm sort of thinking you now from two fourteen to two seventeen, that yeah. was that on field um, you know, disruption or not disruption, but just poor performance and we're able to rebuild then. 
Um, and I think, you know, to, if, to be perfectly honest with, with you guys, you know, we, we probably tried to – we come so close in 18, you know, and, and we made some decisions before that to bring in some senior players and, and we, like, we tr- almost tried to buy a premiership, you know, and, and we, which yeah. is, you know, you know, what it comes off, everyone's rock stars, right? Yeah, exactly. we're, we're premiership, it. you know, but, but it didn't for us. So I think the club needs to be in a position moving forward is, hey, let's, let, let's get that foundation right. Let's, let's, let's give our players the, the best opportunity to be the best they can be. And then if we can be in a position to, you know, to um, a free agency to bring in guns every year, then that's going to help us. But we're not, we're not, you know, it's the foundation which is supporting that decision, not let's buy and win a, yeah. win a flag. That's right. And I think bringing in some of those, you know, top-end players, if we're in a position to do that in the next couple of years, fantastic. But, you know, holding on to the players like Darcy Moore, you know, Jordy Degoe, they are top players now, I think is going to be really important too. Do you think those sacrifices that we made this year are going to allow us to do that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it will. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I think and, and like, I look at a guy like Das. He he's so he looks so important. Obviously, I'm not involved. I know how much goes on behind the scenes, but yeah. he's the type of guy where I think you know we couldn't lose a player like that. It would be heartbreaking. Look, I, I actually think uh, you know Das has come on a, a long way, and you know, obviously all Australian uh, backmen, but he's he's developed, uh, which has been really impressive as a leader too at, at the footy club. Mm. Um, you know, and, and he potentially, you know, he 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 could be, you know, the, the, a, a captain down the track. You know, he's got that leadership yeah. skills. Um, um, you know, the, I mean, I'm not saying he will, but there's obviously Adams and others as well. But but he could be a really important leader for us. And I just I, I just love watching him play. You know, yeah. and, and interesting to see him when he went forward uh, early on in the year. There's a fair bit of pressure on him to perform, but but he definitely can play that role where. He's half back and uh, you know, full back, centre half back, but then a pinch hit up forward for a quarter or so, then bring him back. So, no, it's, it's, it's been great to see his development. Yeah. Uh, Luke, I, I don't know how long you want to have me on for. I have one yeah, that's no, cool, man. I, yeah, yeah, but, but... No, nah, beautiful, man. I, I appreciate you. Oh, we appreciate you coming yeah, on. Those yeah. questions are sick. Got a couple more people no lined up. To start. Yeah, yeah lucky. Done, mate. Done. Happy, happy, actually, it was his 20th birthday the other day. Hey, so. mate, happy birthday, brother. <laughs> no, no, Luke, it wasn't mine. I've got a mate's birthday. Don't stress. Oh, well, I'm going to go to your mate's birthday. That was a while ago. But anyway, no, go guys, <laughs> lads. And, um, Sorry, mate. Thank I you really, very much. <laughs> I really Thank appreciate you. it, guys. Take it easy, all right? Yeah, Thanks, mate. Too. Cheers. See you, mate. Bye. Bye. Uh, we're going to get Leah on now, adding to the stream. Uh, unmute you. Oh, hang on. Oh, can you? Un- you're beautiful. Hey, you uh, can you hear us? Yeah, but I didn't have a question. Oh, you didn't have a question. You just you just jumped on no. to say hi. Yeah. Just right. hey, how are you going? Just Leah? watching and listening. Good, thanks. Oh, how are you? Uh, good stuff. All right. Well, um, thanks for that. I'll get to uh, Magpies Inc. on next. See you later. Yep. Bye. Bye. All right. Hey, mate. How you going? Hey, Swoop, how you going? Hey, Licker. Yeah, good. Hello, mate. Yeah, not bad. Um, I guess Lockie probably asked one of the questions I was going to ask, but it was, uh, I guess, about, you know, the do we have a five-year <laughs> plan? Kind of already spoken about 20 years, five and 20 years. Um, yeah. I guess the, the a big question is around the coach, you know. Yeah. What, yeah. Like, what do you – a time frame. What do you envisage? I know at the moment, you know, Harvey's doing doing his job. Um, not yep. many people are giving him, I guess, the respect. Um, you know, yep. the potential of him him getting the job. I guess, um, and and whether it's whether you, I guess, whether you think it's fair because there's been there's been some commentary um, around. You know, potentially it's a bit unfair on Harvey at the moment to show his best, if you know what I mean. So I guess what yep. you're what it, two questions in that, I guess. So, what are your thoughts around Harvey and and his chances, I guess, and also just given you know, given that he's, he's only got seven games to sort of yeah. show his worth, yeah. yeah. and also if it's not Harvey, when would you envisage yeah. sort of presenting or, or revealing who a coach would be or just yeah. Yeah. So, Matt, I'll start with with, with Harv. So, um, he's you know, um, you guys, not sure if you guys are. Know him or what? But he, he's a he's absolutely he's a ter- terrific man. He's a ripper guy, and he's been a great. He's been, 
Yeah, he's been a great lyric for your club. He's been there for, for 10 years now and and and, and the group um, just love him, you know, as, as, as a bloke and, and as a coach. I guess, as he, and you know what, as a gentleman, he hasn't sort of, he hasn't come in, you know, putting his hand up, screaming for the role, but it's a really good time that he can, he can sort of showcase what he's about. In, in saying that, I, I feel for him because he's got, you know, he's playing without, you know, an Australian fullback now. You know, there's no obviously the guys that we've missed throughout the year with with obviously no howl as well, and and a young bunch of guys coming in trying to understand AFL and learn the structures. So it is it is hard for him. So I ask our supporters to be patient and to respect, you know, um, you know he is a coach. Um, moving forward onto the, the new coach, so I always we always said it out of respect for, for Nathan. We didn't we didn't start anything until he finished that that last game against Melbourne. Um, and then after that, the guys had a week off, so they had that mid-season break. So the club gives every year. I remember when we were playing, we had a mid-season um, break. We would normally would try to get out and have a freshen up a little bit. So it wasn't until a week later we got back and we put together a, a proper coaching um, assessment criteria, and, and we've never had that. And and I guess why I was really big on that was there's a whole list of coaches, right? There's not there's a we've got a list of 92 coaches. Mm. Uh, and whether it's whether it's your Ross Lyons or your, or your Sammy Mitchells or you know your high profile guys or your non high profile guys, what you know what we wanted was just to create this criteria that's going to sort of you know there's ninety two and you can't you can't interview all ninety two but sort of spit out the ones um, that, that that don't fit our current group and mm. funnel that into and whether that person is a high profile or he isn't it's the right fit for Collingwood and and, and um. So that's the process that, that we're going with. And, and we, um, you know, we've got a whole data set mm. of every coach in the AFL at the moment, you know, what they were like as players, premiership players, um, you know, assistant coaches, premiership assistant coaches, all that stuff. So there's a lot of work that we're doing behind the scenes. Um, um, and, you know, <coughs> it's sort of due to, out of respect to these guys, I can't, you can't really say who we're speaking to because obviously they're still at clubs and they don't want to disrupt that. But... Um, look, I, I, I there's there's a few to go through, and we wouldn't be doing the job right, and we wouldn't be feeling you guys if we didn't ensure that we spoke to you know a, a, a lot of them, you know. So, um, and it's really hard to work with with you know obviously you got interstate people, you've got you know hubs here now and and training, so you need to find the right time when we can get in front of them to present. So, but look, I, I don't personally, I don't want to drag on for long. I'd yep. rather find the right person and, and make the announcement and start to get, you know, start to get ready for next year. Okay. Yeah. So, Matt, I'm, sorry, Matt, I can't really have a time <laughs> no, frame. I wasn't but look, you to yeah. give me an answer on who you know. But no, thank you for, for divulging yeah. that. Um, just on, I guess, the suggestion of, you know, the talk of it being a rebuild, like I, I guess, and I've said this to Swoop before. Um, it, it feels like, or Swoop said it as well, you know, it feels, this year kind of does feel like 2017 where we're, yeah. you know, we're losing a lot of games, but we're not losing by much. Um, right. And I remember back in, you know, back in 2017, I categorically remember we'd lost uh, probably about six of our 13 games that we lost by, I think it was less than three goals, which is very similar to what's happened this year. Um, like, we've lost six games by less than 16 points this year, which I'm not saying you win all those, but it's just like, it's just, it's, it's something there. It's not, we're not, get, we're not getting belted. It's not, yeah, yeah. I, I don't consider this as, like, I think they were a really good bottom four yeah. side at the moment. You know, we're not getting belted. Um, you know, we're not scoring, which is which is probably the biggest issue, but our defence is still quite strong. Um, so I don't think it's – I don't consider this period that we're in a, a rebuild because of the way, the way that we're – there's a consistency still. We're performing to a consistent level, whether it's – it's not great, but it's not terrible. So I kind of see us in this yeah. middle. So I'll, I just – I just, yeah, hundred percent, like, yeah, hundred percent, and I think, you know, and this is where, you know, at a, I think Bucks has been up. Bucks has moved on and left the the the, the, the you know, a really the playing list at a really good position. We're not. Don't get me wrong, by a rebuild, we don't need to. You know, it's not a rebuild, 
but, but you know, it's just a matter of okay, let's reset where we are, have a look at it, and 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 continue to yep. build the foundations to be to be a good side for the next twenty odd years, right? That's what I mean by it. I agree with you. Like, you know, we're not as as we've lost you know a number of games by point here and there, and um, you know, or, or by a goal or two that we could that we could have won. You win those games, we're probably sitting you know ninth, tenth, yeah, you know, exactly. and potentially a really good chance in the eight. So. You know, if, if I was to look at, you know, our list at the moment and where we're at, take away – and we had big injuries too to big players. Yeah. I mean, you know, how Adams, Elliot, that, that, yeah. they, these guys walk in there to any any side, you know, and they're big losses for us, not only their capabilities but their leadership as well. So, um, yeah, look, I, I, I certainly agree with you. It's it's not a – don't get me wrong, it's not a rebuild. It's just, just resetting and – yeah. You know, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's not buy the bag. Let's let's yeah. build and stay for twenty years and, and win five. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this year is definitely there's definitely a this year's def, a definitive year. Like we know that. Like there's been a lot of yeah. training. Um, so you know, in history, two thousand and twenty one will be one of those years where we remember. You know, even yeah. in 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 a similar way when Malthouse started. You know, in two thousand. Um, and also even when Lee Matthews started when we were right down and they did the, you know, yeah. in the, just the three or four years before 1990, um, you know. They, so it's kind of like that. And, and yeah. you know, I, I know that there, there, it is a sort of a reset, like you said. Um, but, yeah, I just, I'm quite optimistic. I'm, I'm a bit like Luke. Um, you know, he's, he's very optimistic. And you just, you know, you want to you want to see the best and you want to know that your team can win every week. And we do. You know, I think we... You know, we know we can win every we, we can win any game that we play, yeah. and, and we're going to win tomorrow. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, thank you. I don't have any other questions. But no, thanks, um, thanks for coming on, man. Appreciate it. All good. Cheers. Hello. See you, mate. Bye. Bye. All right, we're going to actually let's answer some questions that were just flicking yeah, okay. through. All right, so uh, let's see. Uh, so. So this one, so this one's from Paul. He says, "Where are we with the salary cap? We went hard for a premiership by maxing out, with moving some guys on last year and attrition this year. Where will we sit?" And I think, as well, Graham Wright came out and said yeah. that we're still a little bit um, yeah. hungover. And I know, you know, it's all uh, legality and stuff, and you can't really talk much about the salary cap. But with moving on those guys that we did, um, and, and, and you know that we that we had to do, and, and looking back on it, it's definitely you know the right the right yeah. sort of decision going going forward um to, you were talking about free agents and, and stuff like yeah. that um in the maybe not this year but in the years to come we are sort of building that yeah that yeah space. look 100 percent, and we need to be so we did look you know we, we we made some decisions in sort of 217 um we brought in chris main and and wells, wells so yeah. sort of more mature age players um with experience and then and it almost worked for us, you know, in yeah. in in two eighteen, and um, I think it was seventeen we brought him in, and and then we and then we thought we're so close, you know, like a, a decision away, and and um, um, you know, being a bit be biased, an umpire decision away that probably wasn't <laughs> there, but um, it was so close. And then we brought in Beams as well, and yeah. and at the time Beams was, you know, he and he still is, you know, he's a gun midfielder who was kicking goals, exactly. so it was really yeah. important for us, yeah. and. And he could have made a real difference, and you know that 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 year in two nineteen it was a great year for us, and unfortunately we lost the prelim, um, but it put a fair bit of pressure on 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 our cap. You know we yeah. had Brody Grundy was up for contract. We, we over, over the space of that two years we had Grundy, Dugowie, and Moore oh, up for contract. Yeah, two, yeah, three. Teams. There's three key players yeah. that, you, that you build your side on right through the middle. So, um, and you know we also caught a fair bit of flack about 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 some of those deals but you know and, and Grundy had an exceptional year yeah. like he was he really he really almost changed the game of that Ruckman play by by being that great sort of tap Ruckman yeah. but also being a plus one midfielder yeah. he was exactly. averaging 25 touches yeah. and you remember the got the running goals he was kicking so um but look last year was obviously was hard um and you know and and you know you look back at it it was the communication to the members that that was that was done poorly but you know we lost sort of three good sort of senior senior players who obviously would have added to our depth this year, um, 
but it's put us in a position that you know we're not we're not yet sure how hard we can go and who's up for free agency but yeah but if it's not this year we definitely will be going and the club needs to be in a position strategically where every year we can manage that and and you know be in that in that in that game yeah. for free agency so if it's if it's not this year, it'll it'll definitely be you, yeah next year. You kind of want to model it, you know, to a, to an extent to like what Geelong were able to do, and I think Buckley came out and said that as well, where we were both fought in that um in that final, final last year, yeah. and then they go on and bring you know yeah. Jeremy Cameron and and um and that's I guess that's the kind yeah. of position that eventually look, look I think want to be in. yeah, and and Geelong have got an, an exceptional culture, and and they're they're one of those teams that. You know, when I talk about the next 20 years and being positioned to win a flag, they have done that. Yeah. But, you know, if you guys remember when they sort of bombed out, Bomber Thompson got another opportunity. Yep. And they come on to win free flags. So, but um, they've got, you know, and Barmy went there and played a, a, an amazing role with, with the structures and the culture yeah. there. And, yep. and and we're not far from that, you know, in terms of the, the, the culture internally. It's it's um, a great bunch of guys. You know, I think I read an article during the week where Sal Wood took a pay cut um, mm-hmm. as as – to bring in those players. Yeah, to bring those players. And, and our players have helped us out enormously over the time as well to be able to, to you know, when we took some of those risks to bring yeah. these players in. So we're not too far off that. Yeah, beautiful. That's exactly what I like. Yeah. All right, we're going to chuck on. Alistair, you ready, mate? I'm going to add you to the stream now. Hey, fellas. How are we doing? Hey, hey mate. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. I'm good, thank you. Mine's more of a light-hearted question because I feel like you're going to get a lot of seriously intense yeah, questions thanks. today. Um, out of all the young talent coming through, yeah, yeah. or not at the club yet, because we all know Nick Dacos is a star, who are you most excited to see develop? You know, yeah. we've got Poulter, Bianco, um, Ginevin's coming through, McCreary is injured, but he's been, I think, one of our key players so far this year. And you can see when he's yeah. out of the team, we're missing something, missing a spark. Yeah. So out of all yeah, the young yeah. talent, who are you most excited to see come through? I don't – look – out of the, all those guys that you've mentioned, I'm really excited about all of them. Um, you know, I love, mm. I love um, you know, the way McCrew has been able to come in and and that pressure. He's he's stepped in, and I already feel like he's 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 got like sort of three years of maturity in mm. this space. Like he doesn't doesn't look like he's out of it. Um, uh, he's I love his pressure, and he can kick goals. You know, so he's awesome. Yeah. And he's a big boss, right, with, with his hammy. Um, I remember his first game against the Giants. I think one of his first plays it was an, a pressure tackle to yeah. turn the ball over. I think that was his first play on the field. So I think that right. set his pace and, and he just you know, went from there. Yeah, what I love about him is he, he's not phased by it all. You know, he's mm. he's he's very very controlled, um, and he just has fun. He just loves mm. it. Just <laughs> loves being there. Loves playing for Collingwood and he's and he's having fun. Yeah. I really like Trent Bianco. Um, he's he had some injuries. You know, early on this year, so he, I still think he's he's got a lot of work, um, a lot of upside in his in his in his uh, sort of physical in terms of his fitness and strength. But I like him. I think he's, he reminds me of a bit of a a bit of a side bottom where he's he's a very quick decision maker. Okay, and he can use and he uses the ball extremely well. And we've seen the, the goals he's kicked over the last couple of weeks. Like he's going to be mm. really good. Well, I mean, I love Poulton on the wing. Um, I think the more game time he'll get, and and the endurance that he'll be able to build, yeah. you know, especially after this year. This is what I mentioned earlier. I love the fact that our young guys are, are, are just getting the opportunity to play senior football and understand yeah. how hard fitness levels you need to be. I think that's um, what everyone needs, everyone needs to realize that you know they're, they're yeah. building a team now that's not going to be the most successful now. Maybe not next year, but in two or three years' time, they're going to be pushing for a flag and keep pushing. And I think that's Look, something that's a, more special than just yeah, buying a flag, right. like you said. Like it's you're it, building it, it, a team it, to get it. Yeah. And it reminds me a bit of um, it reminds me a bit about um, you know when I remember when I just retired and we had Jared Blair and Show Wellingham coming through and these yeah. guys they started playing senior footy and understood how hard it was. Um, another another guy who who I, I rate is uh, is Murphy. You know, mm. I more. I love I love Murphy when we played um, we played Frio. I think it was in in the last quarter. Murph got the ball in the back pocket. Yeah, yeah. And I think it was spoken to you, and he swung around his right foot and he hit JT on the top of the fifty. Now this kick had to be spot on, and he executed it, and he wasn't scared not to try. JT got it. We played on. It was another kick, and it was kick for goal, and we ended up getting mm. the goal out of it. That's the stuff that 
that we need and I love that. So it's really exciting. I mean, you know, um, Mesh is really so, courageous as well. He takes some absolutely screamer marks that yeah. like takes a yeah. lot of cards to take some of the stuff he does. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, 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 yeah. And, and so that's the stuff that, that, that we need, you know, and, um, but now look, it's exciting. We've got some good young boy. You mentioned mm -hmm. Nick Day. I mean, obviously he's not there yet, but you know, there's a lot, a lot of raps on him. I think even I think talking about the Dacos boys, Josh Thomas is a fair bit. Uh, sorry, Josh Dacos also. Um, he, he he. I know I don't want to put miles on him, um, but he reminds me of a young Gary Ablett Jr. Like he's, <laughs> he's just, the way you he's, heard it here first. Guys. He's just um, <laughs> you know like he's he's very strong. His core body is very strong, mm. um, and his agility, a very good ball user, um, and and it's it's been a bit harder for him this year because a lot of teams are paying a bit more attention to him now. Particularly around around the ball, so um, no. Look, I'm I'm really excited with where we are. You know, it's, yeah. um, it's a really. I good think it's a good place too. I think we're yeah. building a team that's going to last us a, a long right. time. Not just a team that's going to be for the now. If there's right. a lot of clubs out there who yeah. who are building a team that's now, like I don't want to say yeah. Geelong for example, but yeah. Geelong they have an older list, and they're yeah. not going to go for two, three more years. While our list is young and can build for five, six years to go. So I think we're in a great place. Yeah. yeah. I know I've, I've, I've missed a lot, a lot of other young guys coming through, but the one who I like who we picked up, I like Ash Johnson. Um, mm. Watching highlights of him, he's going to be you – now, if you didn't hurt his finger at training, I, I, I reckon he would have played senior footy this year. So, oh. And he is um, – you know, I know he's not the big name – Forward player that uh, that you know that that everyone wants at this stage, but he could be. He yeah, could I feel be. like I feel like everyone wants someone who's now. But I feel like if Ash, even with yeah. Kelly and Ollie, you know, they can build yeah. up to be and Cameron Darcy yeah. Cameron in another aspect. Well, he's that's right. To be a massive key forward, yeah. Ollie, Ollie, you know, Kelly, these guys, um, you know, they they we've only seen bits of them. It does take two, three years to just sort of mm. settle and then, and then and then move on. So it's like Josh Dacos last year was a standout year and he was drafted twenty sixteen or seventeen. Yeah, so, yeah. 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 Ty Brown's another one. Yeah. Yeah. And Cal, yeah. What's Beautiful. my question? Thank you. Thanks for coming on, man. Thanks, man. Thanks, mate. See ya. See ya. But uh, actually hang on. There we go. All right. So we're just gonna ask answer another question yep. from Justin here. What makes a successful club culture? How do we attract players and make players want to stay for the success of the club? Which is kind of what you were talking about. A little yeah, bit. yeah. So, okay. Well, one, I think a really good, what, what makes the culture of footy club is when it's driven by the players, you know. So, and and, when, and you know, I think we've got that. But I remember, I remember when we were playing, you know, and 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 Kit uh, Mick come in and and really change the culture of the footy club. It it was really player driven, and and it was that strong. And it's something that I try to do that I try to build in a mob organisation at work. Is if players come into into the football department um, and they didn't align themselves with our values and our culture, they sort of found their way out. You yeah. know, uh, you know, the players wouldn't get rid of them. They just sort of found their way out, and that's really important. Um, you know, and I think a real clear vision, you know, in terms of, okay, what's what's our strategy? What's our game day strategy? We're going to train for it um, and we're going to stick to it. I remember a time when I was playing um, and we lost four in a row and, um, and you know, obviously a fair bit of media attention and uh, – but, but Mick, you know, just told us, hey, we're sticking to this process. We're sticking to this structure. We know it works. And we stuck to it, and then we come back and won the next eight in a row. I think yeah. it was so. Um, yeah, the, the culture is driven by everyone. Like, you no, know, I, I certainly think uh, you know. There's a saying in in business. You guys have heard it. You know, culture eats strategy. But you've got to have a place and the environment that people want to come to, and and work. You know, and 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 train. You know, and um, and you know, I, I, I honestly believe that that Collingwood is that place. I know there's a lot of disruption going on, right? And, and personally, I think there's a bit of a media PR campaign that's trying to drive it. Because if I'm honest about the disruption, it's not it's not it's not within Collingwood. It's outside of it. Yeah, people are creating it outside of Collingwood, um, but in terms of within it. It's it's strong. We know exactly where where, where we're going, and that know? kind of leads to this question from yeah. Greg. Um, unfortunately, perception can be reality, uh, yeah. and the perception seems to be out there that the front office is still unstable and open to challenge. Is that filtering through from candidates for for coaching? Um, 
Okay, so I don't look. It's, it's as I said within the organisation, you know, and and you know, and, and I've, I've asked people to you know, speak to staff members, speak to players, if um, you know how stable we are, and we are, we're one hundred percent stable. You know, we're actually, and you know, being absolutely no disrespect to anyone, but but we're running. It's, there's a lot of clarity with what we're doing, you know, in terms of processes. You know, board members are aligned to different parts of the business. Um, you know, so we're in a really good spot. Like what I, what annoys me is I find that, the, you know, when, when I hear different media personalities come out and say stuff which isn't true, it's really disrespectful. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and they're driving the PR because Collingwood sells. You know, 100%. Yeah, exactly. Viewers will jump on the TV shows, you know, every night of the week. And hear him bag, you know, Collingwood and bag me and Pete Murphy and you know, all these guys. When what I find are really disrespectful, these guys who do that, come and speak to me, you know, come and sit down and I'll, I'll, I'll be. I'm always honest yeah. with, with 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 these guys. So, you know, and it is it is the perception and, and people believe it. But in terms of within, we are rock solid, you know. And and I mean, you don't hear about that. Stuff. We, we don't hear about it. But, but I'll tell you what. Got, now I'm starting to come out and 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 speak a bit more about it and. Sorry if I'm dribbling on a little bit about it, but I'll take a couple of things. One is when, when, when I when you jump on a board at, at the Colin Football Club, um, it it takes it's, it's it can be a bit intimidating. You you got Eddie McGuire's, you got your Alex Wise, it's your Christine Holgate, Mark Quarters, all these guys. Um, you, you, and and I think you need to, particularly in my position, I've just you know retired twenty uh, twelve years now, and and now hit the business world. You've got to. It's a good opportunity for me to sit back and listen and learn. Okay, um, it does take a couple of years to be able to have the influence that you want. I think now I'm starting to be able to start having and and, and avert the trust. Yeah. Um, but I look at the way the whole Nathan Buckley, um, you know, sort of uh, finished up and his exit, which you know, and I've said to to anyone who listens, Bucks will be back. You know, like I can see Bucks, you know, sitting with us at the footy. In a month's time, and talking about the you know, different players, but I thought we handled it as best as we possibly could. It's never great when you've got a legend of the footy club who's who's, who's leaving the club, yeah. whether whether you retire in a year or you know mid year like Bucks's sake. But you know, Bucks, it was always about what's best for Collingwood. You yeah. know, um, so so yeah, you know, I, 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 um, I, I we are in a really good spot. Is it is it concerning with, when I'm speaking to coaches? I don't believe it is. But I think I really hope the media and you know um, that we need to be really careful because it can it can disrupt you know, potential coaches to come to course, yeah. to come to Collingwood. Yeah. All right, well we're going to chuck on Pommy. So this <laughs> this guy is a good mate, but he is a Carlton supporter. So and he's British. So excuse the excuse the accent, just let's straight get, up. Let's get security. <laughs> I, I, I like the way that you introduce me as British as if it's some kind of disease. <laughs> no, hey, bear, with, bear with him. He's got learning difficulties. He's from England. <laughs> um, well, obviously, first of all, I, I've got to commend both of you for doing this. I, I think it's phenomenal. And obviously, liquor as well. He's got, what, the second best pipes in AFL behind the great cooter, hasn't he? So... <laughs> <laughs> Um, my question, you've kind of answered it, but I wanted to elaborate a bit more. Obviously, we know that I find as a foreigner to this game and only been here 10 years, the AFL media pretty much control what fans think, um, as opposed to in the UK where yeah. clubs kind of drive that mindset a bit more. Now, yeah. do you think in this day and age of social media, like what you're doing now, it would be better if the big clubs like our own, Carlton, your club, Collingwood, they run the AFL because they are the marketable brands. Yeah. Started adopting the social media to allow the fans, the shareholders of the club, really, a, a look inside of what really goes on, which takes the power away from Tom Brown throwing darts and creating yeah. fake rumours. Yeah, mate, look, a really good question. And it's, I'll tell you now that... Um, been back for a little while, you're spot on. And I'll tell you, as a player, and this is what I was conscious of, as a player, we hated when board members come up and said something in the media because we're like, dude, we just want to win games of footy, mate. You know, <laughs> stay away. And that's that's honest to God. So I was really careful about that. And I would, and, and I told our board that, hey, listen, you know, we don't want, particularly, you know, 
the stuff that was going on this year, it's like, guys, you know, they've got enough pressure at the moment. Nathan Buck is under enough pressure. They don't need us coming out, you know. So now it's, it's sort of changed a little bit. Um, and, and it's you know, it's been great for us. They're sitting there, they're meeting different members and different members groups. I think what you're saying is 100% right and it's going to change. You know, I, I really do believe that. I think, you know, the club needs to be, you know, and, and we will be and we've spoken to, to a lot of members Will be because I reckon in the past the AFL's controlled a lot of it and have shut that that connection that over communicated to members. We've made a decision now that we, we, we actually will over communicate to members. You know, get members involved, get them understanding. We're starting a um, there's a new members members committee which is going to start up within the next week or so. Um, I think some comms, yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the emails, yeah, the emails come out, yeah. um, and that's that's to get. You know, different sort of, you know, and we'll rotate that, different members, and, and I'll go on that a little bit later on, but, you know, where we, we want to hear about what, what what you guys want. Is it the social club open? Is it seating here? Is it that? Um, and we can share some insight back into what, what we're thinking and the direction we're going, but I reckon that's a real game changer is, is that we need to take some control out of the AFL and start sort of um, speaking to our members a lot more, definitely. 100%. I think seeing my, my club in the UK, Rangers, it's something that we've really embraced during COVID. Coaches directly doing video feedback to fans, yeah. chairman, board, seeing what they do on a day-to-day -day basis as well. The chairman of Rangers, we've had him for a while now, but just to see him have a video vlog, do a vlog, so you actually yeah. see what the hell he does instead of just you think he's drinking fine wine and entertaining, to actually see he's actually got a job and he's actually doing something that matters. I think it dispels, because you've got all these threats of EGMs. Like I hate yeah. to say it, I feel sorry for Collingwood this year. You've had all this horrible media, but then I've listened to this interview, and you've dispelled a lot of that that has caused the threats of the EGM in the fan yeah. base, because your enemy, the fans, use social media to communicate, where the clubs yeah. don't. And I think that's just mind-boggling. Having you on the show once a month, may end all of this yeah hey but I, I really like that idea about um you know the vlogs yeah just get <laughs> just getting just getting you know someone from the club or sweep or something just sort of following you know myself or other board members or, or other execs around for a day say this is what we do this is this is our job you know and talk a bit about that just to get to know us better you know um there's a lot of yeah i reckon it's, it's a good idea mate and, and, and can i tell yeah. you since um now that I've, I've sort of, you know, been able to get more involved in in terms of media, media uh, members and fans, I'm learning a lot of what the guys want to hear, you yeah. know, and and um, and being able to provide this feedback. So it's a really good point. Thank you. Uh, I, I just find it like mind boggling as well with your with the with all of AFL memberships that there isn't like an exclusive content online like that. So. With my Rangers membership, that's what you get. You get access behind closed doors. You get access to training, that the open training, that it's actually video streamed just for members. Get to meet you. Like There's something beautiful, I think, for Collingwood fans to see you go and play golf, see what your day-to-day -day yeah. life is like outside yeah. of being the board member, actually yeah. the human being. And when you humanise them, it takes away the attack because yeah. people realise you are a person. Well, well, but yeah, look, a hundred percent, man. What I'll do, and, and look, I must admit, some of the stuff that's come out over the past three months, which is lies, it, it does affect you, you know, like as much as you try not to. And, and I've always said, I'm just focusing on uh, on the new coach. That's that's you know, I'm gonna try to cut that out. But it's hard, you know. I remember when the first when the stuff came out about me ratting on Eddie Maguire, I was devastated. You know, I I, I never ever would do that, and I never did do that. But I remember because, um, you know, there was people at my kid's school saying that, you know, and, and I remember one moment, which I'll never forget, which really hurt me. I was actually going to a game and I was just walking past, um, I, was, I was going into gate three and I was walking past two, two common people and a guy walks past me and he said um, to his mate, hey, that's the guy that rated Eddie Maguire. And, and I stopped and I turned around and I went to, I was about to call him but it just really, it, it, it really hurt me because that's furthest from the truth, mate. So it's, it does, it does, yeah, it does take a, a fair bit out of here. And, and I think it'd be great for, 
you know, for, for, for the guys to understand who we are and what we do better, you know, to the point where, like, I, I might even log on, you know, in another in another four weeks or something. Yeah, you know, so. especially after we get it after we after we we, we we get get a coach, I could log on and tell you guys why we thought this was That'd the be, right the yeah, right person. Sick. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, 100%. Uh, yeah I, I always think it's just like a great thing, and I think it's something that AFL is stuck in the eighties. Is really stuck in the eighties. I think with the access to clubs, the access to fans, and I, I have seen as a Carlton fan, and I speak to other guys as well of other clubs. I find it kind of disgraceful that some of the clubs haven't used COVID as an opportunity to connect to us as as people when we can't go and see you. And I think there's been a real opportunity miss there. And like you say, yeah. I think they're idiots who slag you off. Yeah. Like if they actually saw you face to face on a camera, it's very hard to send a nasty message to you when you've yeah. got to jump on the camera. And I'm looking at you two Adonises and I reckon <laughs> I might need a, I might need a few beers to take you guys out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, nah, mate. Well, thank you, mate. Thanks for for um, to giving us some insight into what some of the clubs are doing overseas, and you know, yeah, it's really good. Yeah, it's it's good. For, as I said, I'll I'll be a lot more engaged moving forward. That's for sure. Uh, thanks, Bob. My pleasure. Look after Luke, and uh, my boys will butter you next week. Don't worry about oh, it. Mate. Jesus <laughs> Christ! Here we go. See you, mate. Thank See you. Mate. See you, mate. Yeah, mate. Uh, so uh, we'll get on a couple other guys soon. Uh, we'll answer a couple more questions. So Andrew says, my son has become disheartened watching yeah. us play some uh, slow, boring football. Do you see what he sees? And, you know, in truth, we have been playing. Not we have been playing slow. Yeah, well, I mean, look, it, it, is, it is hard to – you know, it's been hard to watch. And and I think, you know, and, and we know last what last week was like the first three quarters. Yeah. It, it, it is hard. And I'll tell you, um, I think my um, – my mum actually, I spoke to my mum and she's like, why, why do we keep going sideways? Or back? You know, it, so it's, I was like, mum, it's the last person I need is you telling me. You know, <laughs> but, um, but look, and, to, and if I can be really honest, I, I think what's happened with, with our players is obviously lost a lot of confidence, okay, a lot of confidence. And as a player, when you've got the ball and your confidence is low, you know, you don't do what Nathan Murphy did and you play and hit that, hit that hard kick. You hold and you... You, you look around and that's the easiest option and it's the safest, you hit that. Okay, so, so and that's what we've been doing, you know, and, you know, and ideally if that, if that option's open, you hit it, they get it and they go. But um, so I think that just through what's happened and, and the confidence, you know, players are a little, little nervous on, on, on taking the game on. Yeah. But that's definitely, I, I agree with that. When players are playing like that, it, it, it can be boring and it is boring to watch, you know. Um, so, uh, yeah, two. I can't remember what the, uh, who it was. I think it was the son. Tell tell your son to hang in there. It's going to turn around. Um, and he's going to love watching Combo play again. That's for sure. That's I promise. Good. All right, uh, Mark. I'm going to add you to the stream now, man. Uh, sweet. How you going, bud? How you going? Hey, Mark. How you doing? Good, mate. Uh, so thanks, Paul, for doing this, and and Luke for arranging it. Um, it's. Uh, uh, great, been great to watch. I did miss the start of the stream, so I, I do have a, uh, just two or three questions. I apologise yep. in advance if they've been asked already. Yep. Um, first and foremost, do you, Paul, have a, uh, a, a, I suppose, a time frame for when you're looking to appoint the senior coach? I know that's probably how long's a piece of string, but yep. um, is there internally a date that you're working towards? And also as part of that process, are you looking at assistant coaches as well? Yeah, mate, really good question. I did say earlier before it's it is really hard to to um to put a time frame because you know the you know the, the initial list of coaches there's not into all of them, and that's including mm. probably seven or eight who aren't coaching at the moment. Mm. So um, I don't think we could put a time timeline on on that on this process because you want it you want to do it right. And I said earlier, mate. There's a lot of noise on, you know, whether it's a, you know, whether just using the name of the Ross Line, or, you know, Clark or whoever, it is, or a Sammy Mitchell or, or a um, you know, Blake Carousella. So what what we did do was spend a fair bit of time putting together a co coaching assessment criteria, and that's built on on analysing the gaps of what the, the current playing group is right now. So that way it could sort of cut this list of 92 down into okay, here's a list of you know 15, 20 to start with. And we put them through to the process, and it'll, it'll spit out the right person for Collingwood, the best person 
Ellis and with Collingwood, whether that is a high-profile coach or whether that isn't, okay? We haven't, and as I said, we haven't put a timeline through it because you want to do it right. And, and to be honest, there isn't, there's actually, like, there's no hurry. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like, quick, let's get, let's get um, Blake Cosella because someone else is going to get him. That doesn't that doesn't really happen now, you know, because we've still got what seven eight games yeah. at the end of the season. So, mm. I think more importantly, let's really do it right. Let's do the D and D right, you know. Let's get to know this person. It's not just because, you know, as you can imagine, when you sit in front of someone for an interview, we've probably all done it. You're pumping yourself up. You're telling you're, <laughs> you're telling uh, who was who's listening how good you are. But I guess it's it's really important to, particularly for what what, what we need. It's it's you know what's a good genuine person who isn't there for two, three years. It's there, you know, who's going to help us build the foundations. Once they, you know, and we've got them now, but now help to, to really grow that and have 20 years of success, you know. Yep. So I hope that answers what you're after, Mara. It's a bit long-winded. No, that's, uh, that's good. And um, I suppose I, I do have a, a friend wanted me to ask, and I'm not sure if you've got oversight of it, but she wanted me to ask if Collingwood would be renewing its netball license for next year and if it sees netball as part of the future of the organization yeah look 100 percent. yes absolutely like, like with the club made a decision uh, four, four or five years ago around um sort of women's sport and it is important for us and if i can be you know perfectly honest i think we we because it was it was it was like it just a decision was a decision was made and all of a sudden we've got women's women's footy and and netball um, and we probably didn't manage it well, to be honest. I reckon we sort of stretched the resources, whereas, whereas now we've got it right and we've got people who are, you know, who are tailored for, for women's sport, footy and netball. So, we, yeah, we definitely are extending that uh, that licence. Um, yes. It's a, you know, and, 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 you know, these, the women's sport, these, they're, 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 Proper serious athletes. You know, a lot of them, you know, netball. We've got players who represent Australia and have played mm. all around the world. They come in and bring a lot of insight into Collingwood. So it's been a, it's been a, a great experience for us. Fantastic. And just before I go, um, sort of tagging on to Pommy's question about uh, getting the club more connected with its members. Yeah. Um, I sort of half run the Collingwood Forum on Reddit, and it's a very active community. So I want to extend to you. An invitation if you want to do something similar like you're doing with Luke now, like doing an Ask Me Anything on the forum yeah. um, and getting in touch with the fans there. Uh, if that's something you're interested in or other people at the club are interested in, then uh, I can get Luke to pass on my details. Uh, yeah, offline. Okay. Absolutely, mate. No worries. We'll Beautiful. Do it. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Um, we've got to answer just a couple more before, yeah. we, before we finish up. So Donato asks, uh, so look at, uh, with Dacos coming in next year, are we going to be trading future picks this year to get more high up in this year's draft? So obviously you can't, you know, yeah. it's, it's hard with, with picking and, and where everyone's finishing and stuff like that. But we, we know that most likely, you know, we're going to go into some form of, of deficit probably unless we do uh, a lot of trade trading. But there's yeah. been a lot of talk obviously about uh, Nick Dacos and, and stuff like that. And, you know, if he's coming to the club and, and, de- and, um, with the foot with the father son, but uh, yeah, he's 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 one we've got one hand on on, on him, right? Yeah, you yeah, know, look, of course, we'll, we'll be doing everything we can to, to get a player of his caliber into our footy side. You know, I remember speaking to Bucks in in sort of early rounds this year saying that he was a player who could come in and play senior footy yeah, now, so true. he's he's ready to go. So, whether it, it means you, you know you, you got to come in and be negative to get him. You do anything you can to get the player. Yeah, like that. They don't yeah. come up very, very often. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, you know, we'll be doing everything, obviously, everything we can to, to, yeah. to get him to get him long time playing with his brother. And of course, he's a, he's a Dacos name, mate. We can't we can't let players like that or names like that sit somewhere else. <laughs> exactly right. All right, so we'll have um, a couple more, and then and we'll finish up. We've been on for nearly an hour. Uh, Kev's Magpies, we want to add you to the stream, brother. Uh, I can see you're walking, so if you want to just. Just chill out. Yeah. Hey, mate. How are you? Hi, Lika. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, good, mate. Um, just a couple of things with this whole board rumbling stuff. Yeah, I think it should should stop. To be honest with you, like it shouldn't matter who's in charge, as long as they do the best thing by the club. 
Like, I just want to say that out there because it, it is going to be on a job that, you know, you hear one wins off this, or, oh, you know, the scene interest and that sort of stuff, and you're unhappy. Well, if you're unhappy, then why didn't you come out back then feel, telling the club that you're unhappy? Yeah, mate. Instead of got... waiting now. Yeah, mate, thanks. Thanks, mate. I, I, I appreciate you saying that. To, to me, and, and look, I, I, I don't know Jeff Brown, okay, and, and, and I'm all for it. Anyone who can come and help Collingwood, come and talk, please. You know, that's, I want to li- let's listen to it. And if it meant me getting off for you to come on, 100%, I'll, I'll do that tomorrow. If it's going to be the best for Collingwood, I'll do that tomorrow. Um, but I, I, I'm, I'm a, I am a bit frustrated. I, I find it a little bit embarrassing, to be honest. Um, and as I said, I personally think it's, it's a bit of a campaign outside of – because internally – we are solid, you know, and you know, everyone's got clear directive roles in what we need to do. Um, so I, I, I'm with you a bit, mate. It's, it's, it's a bit embarrassing, to be honest, um, you know, because this football club is bigger than any individual, anyone. You know? Oh, 100%. And, and, um, we all come and go. This football club is, is, stays, you know, and, and it is a religion to, to a lot of us, you know. So, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm with you, mate. Thanks for sharing. Um, with the also this, I don't know if you can explain this or not to me, but yeah. if we're playing, uh, for example, a VFLW like semi final, even a VFL, and we even do make the grand final, why do we have to play in Port Melbourne, and can't we just have it like at Victoria Park or the Holden Centre? Good question, mate. Um, look, it's uh, I, it's it's run by. So a lot of that stuff's run by VF, uh, so, uh, a- Victoria VFL, so um, AFL Vic, so that they they align all the games. I mean, with VFL footy, finals have always, for some reason, been played at Port, at, uh, Port Melbourne. Melbourne. Um, so it's, and that's out of our control a bit. Mate, I'd love to play every game in Victoria Park. <laughs> you know, it, it's, I just live near Victoria Park. It's not too far away. But, yeah, it, it's out of our control. Um, but one thing we, we are talking about Victoria Park, one thing that, that we're, we're trying to do is, and I spoke to Pendles during the week about it, and, and it was actually his suggestion, um, we're all for it, is actually go back and start training a bit more there and, and might have, um, you know, members' days there at training. It might be, might be every sort of school holiday yeah. is, is we'll go and have a training session there and, and get, get people involved. I used to love, I still love Victoria Park. I was going to watch footy there. And when we trained there, one of my biggest memories was we train and then we have like sausage scissors. Yeah. And some members in that, so yeah, something, that, it's something that we certainly are trying to bring back. That's awesome, Kev. Thank you so much for jumping on, man. Thanks, man. Um, That's love you both, and go the pies tomorrow. Thanks, Thanks man. Go pies. Um, so we'll probably finish up going for an hour. Yeah, happy to stay a bit longer. Yeah, you happy to stay a bit longer? Yeah, yeah sweet, yeah, man. Yeah. All right. Well, if you guys have got more um, questions, is there anything? Actually, I might have a couple questions for you. Um, I know. Unless you want to, yeah, you want to, you can filter through and, and uh, see what you can, see what you can answer. If there's anything that look, you feel like you know you what? It's, it's funny. There's a question here. I'm just reading about it, right? And, and oh, if you just press yeah, come up there, yeah. this is a good. This is a really good one. Who cares about the board? It has no effect on players. Do you know what? You're spot on. You're 100 percent spot on because you know players want to play footy. You know, and, and so I, I see board members' roles is we need to remove. So when I first started, I was like. I said to Ed, Ed, don't don't ask me to tell Bucks how to coach or players how to play. You know, we used to have board members come up to us when we we're training and trying to teach us how to kick footy. Mind you, this person didn't play a game in their life, right? So, as a board member, you step right back. I think what what we need to do is strategically, we need to remove any barriers they've got. So that's like, so the questions now that I'm asking right is, okay, what do we need for our players to be the best? We owe it to our players and our staff that when they're at Collingwood, you leave a better person because that's what it did for me, right? So. How do we get the best out of a Josh Dacus or Nick Dacus or, or you know, a Cox or anyone else? Okay, and um, but it's a, it's a really it's a it's a good observation. You know, players play footy. You know, and and our role is more strategically two three years ahead, and that's what we need. To, that's what we need to be doing. Beautiful. All right. So actually, I've got another one, kind of about the board as well. Nathan asks, can you talk a bit more about the board dynamic? The lineup is impressive, yet there's so much chat about a need for change. Yeah, which seems nonsensical. What, well, what would you say to give people confidence? Yeah, and I so, think that's that's what everyone wants. Just yeah, so, so mate, so what what we did was was Pete Murphy, um, Pete Murphy, and Eddie. They they 
um, provided a review of the footy club in 1718. And um, the biggest thing that came out of it was, hey, the board's been there for a long time. We need to change it. So so then not, I come in, Jody Sizer come in. The last five years, there's seven board members. The last five years, as of today, there's been five new board members. So you can't – this is my experience. Could be wrong. You can't – with an organisation like Conway, you, you can't just – you know, get rid of this current board and get this board to come in because the guys there have, they have now you've got experience. Like even me, I've been on there for, for three years. Last year was COVID, it was really hard. I didn't go to the hub. But now it's taken me three years, to, okay, now to really understand it yeah. and um, and think of, okay, innovative ways for us to be better because you've got to, you, you know, you've got to respect, you respect the coaches. You know, Jeff Walsh, who, who's one of the best food directors you know, um, around, or ha- you, you've got to listen and learn from that. And and, and footy is very interesting. You, you can't come in in these roles and have an impact straight away. You've it, it, a lot of experience you've got to learn. So, um, um, yeah, so, so if I go through our, our board, just for, so obviously Mark Court has been here for, for a long time. Um, he's, he plays a financial role and we're, but, you know, financially the club's in the position, the best position it's ever been, Okay financially um and obviously up there with 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 um a lot of the highest you know your eagles you know these guys that support themselves really well and so i just on that as well before you go the perception is yeah and I, I was seeing a couple in the comments as well yeah is that how can you you know quarter we're in a good financial position he doesn't control the the salary cap with the players and stuff and what the position we're yeah. in is it a so, separate sort of entity. So, no, so, so what we've look to be honest, what happened was, was the um, we've now changed it. We have a lot of governance in role where the balls are across it a lot more. Yeah, you know, in the past that that you know it wasn't, um, and it was just the way Colin would chose to do things. Yeah, now it is. Yes, you know, now yeah, the, now the now the boards across it. You yeah. know, um, so his quarters role was more financially outside the football club. You know, because there was. You know, a lot of people don't know this, but but even in in the, you know the, the, the two to 16, we'll, we'll financially in a lot of trouble. You know, so we're able to turn the, the, that that position around. You yeah. know, and now we're, we're the best players the club's ever been at, which can make us can give us an advantage for for soft cap and building the best resources around our food department. But if I really quickly, I'm not sure you guys are interested in that, but I think you are. So that's my quarters role. We've got Peter Murphy. So Pete Murphy is a really stupid businessman. What I love about Pete is. Is the way he sees people and and strategically keeps thinking and asking the right questions. Um, strategy wise, he's one of, he's one of the best I've ever ever seen. Yeah. Um, and and I've sort of presented in front of Pete before, and he, he'll he'll pull apart what I'm saying. And he's like a still side bottom in terms of decision making in that split second. Pete does that really well, and he'll pull apart and ask me questions, and I'm sitting there going, "Wow, man, how'd you even think of that? Yeah. That type of stuff." Okay. Yeah. Um, Jodie Sizer, she's she's terrific. You know, we do a lot of work she's done around the Do Better report and the initiatives there. And strategically, she's she's amazing. Um, uh, Kristen Holgate, you know, CEO of Stray Post. Um, you know, she's she's I've seen her step up as well in terms of the leadership role that she plays, and she's been really really impressive. Yeah. Um, you know, and I'll, I'll go back. To, and then we've got. Um, uh, there's Neil and Bridie who just come on. So, so and, and Bridie Fish isn't on yet. She's, but and she, she you know, hopefully she gets elected in, yep. in the AGM. But Bridie's role, and this is what I'm really big on, is okay. Let's pull apart the club and understand where our gaps are. We had the question about women's sport. I believe we had a gap in women's sport. And what was happening was, you know, I was, you know, myself and the bomb were trying to spend more time in women's sport. But it's really hard. Like, I've got you got women, you got men's football. And I'm going to footy every week and then training sessions. It's really hard to then go watch netball and, and watch women's sport as well yeah. and, and go to training. You just can't s- spread your time. Yeah. So she's come, she, and being a past athlete, she come on and to play, that's one of her roles. The second part is she, her background's in sports science and medical. We don't have anyone on the board that has a medical degree. So when you, when you want to pull apart, you know, the men's, sports science program yeah it, it's it's yeah. you don't really know yeah, it yeah. it's really hard it's really hard to challenge a doctor or or, or our yeah. sports scientist but you know respectfully challenge yeah, them yeah, now course, she yeah. can come in and play that role so and when she presented she was amazing she was so i was just gonna make this is a gap that we have and we and we need it yep neil's come on he's he's his background in obviously um 
in racing Victoria. He's he did a lot of work digitally. I think there's a gap digitally, and Brad's come on to to, to help play that role at the football club. But the, all this stuff we're saying now with communication, this is this is Neil's forte. So you'd be able yeah. to come in and really play a significant role there and help engage with fans a lot more, which is really, really important as we all know now. Yeah, um, he's also he also did the redevelopment redevelopment of the grandstand in Flemington. And we do a lot of work on, you know, one of the things we need to do is is, you know, in the mid two thousands, the Holden Centre was well, Lexus Sense back then was the best facilities in Australia. Now it's not. Now it's probably down to six, seven, eight. Wow. Yeah. So Neil can play a real role in that redevelopment and make it a state of the art around the world. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, have I missed anyone else? Who else? Do I go? Uh, nothing. So I was Pete. Yeah. 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 And, and then you know, and then, and, yeah. you know, then there's myself. <laughs> and and can I say someone told me the other day with, with in terms of what what my role. It's funny, you know, when when I think about. You know, and, and I'm not saying, you know, whether I'm, I'm the right person. So I think a board, what, what we need to do with the board is we need to be, so there's, we have the Collingwood Foundation board, and I was on that for 10 years. I reckon that's a real good, you know, a, a good board is like a good list. You need to you need to have people, you know, in, in uh, you know, we need to be grooming other board members who are coming through to then go, you know, to, and, and your board changes. So, so we're putting terms on now. We never yeah. had terms. Yeah. So whether it's three, three-year gaps or two, three-year um, uh, terms on the board, we have a we have members. It's like a good playing a good playing list. Yeah. I step out, someone else comes in. You know that yeah. sort of stuff. So, uh, but when I think about you know with you know I've I've loved you know I love my time and you know this football club. I've been a, a fan, a player, so a fan, a member, a player, a past player, a coach. It is you know development coaching there and, and helping out in it there. Um, then you you know you, you're a, you're a, a football administrator. I was. I did some work in membership, and then you, um, then you're on the on the foundation board ten years now as a food director. So some I think you know what it's 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 great to be able to learn all that knowledge and now try to bring it back. And yeah. now that I've been there for three years, I've actually learned a lot to be able to bring back there. So, and and for me, the beauty is you know our athletes. I think the priority is you come in. We need we need to build the best program for you to be the best, and then to leave a better person. You yeah, know, so yeah. and for our staff as well. Beautiful. All right, uh, King Goma asks. So this is kind of about the coaching board. Yeah. Um, what was the thought behind uh, bringing back Luke Ball? Okay. Yeah. Look. So we we, we wanted. You know, there's a bit of there's a bit of noise around getting that another footy person there, and you know, and you know, so whose names come up? So we had um. Uh, you know, obviously there was there was um, uh, like Lee Matthews, you know, who's had a lot of success and and, and been around for a while. He's on the board of Brisbane, so he, he sort of couldn't. You now we had Jason Dunstall, you know, obviously a big connection to Hawthorne. You know, Mick Malthouse name was was floated yeah. up, and and who I was, was speaking quite regularly about this. Um, and then Luke Ball, you know, he, he's Ball is 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 very switched on character, great footballer, Premiership player at Collingwood. Um, you know, part of the AFLPA as well. A- AFLPA, it? yeah. Spent some time at Essendon doing some some coaching there. So, you know, we thought he could. Is he, you know, he, the pro. Not we thought we we know he's going to add a, a lot a lot of value to that process and be able to pull apart and, and pick apart presentations. Yeah. Um. So that was that was the appointment of, of him. You know, there's obviously Roddy who's got an enormous amount of credibility and experience. There's myself. Then you've got the CEO. And CEO, obviously the CEO of the Free Club, and Pete Murphy is, is, is on board as well. Um, and and his, as I said, his strengths about people and strategy, you know, and he's a big believer in in in, in engaging with people to get the best out of them. How do you empower empower yeah. these guys, you know? So I'm really comfortable with, with our board and what we were uh, our, our, our committee, the food, the food and coaching our committee. Yeah, the we 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 chatted before and. You, you kind of said that, and and never I can kind of say it. We have we've never had this sort of board, um, this coaching this coaching selection yeah. panel in the last what twenty or so years. You know, with, what what was it? It was Lee Matthews. You know, you know. Then you had Tony yeah. Shaw. Then you had Malthouse. Then yeah. straight away you had yeah. Buckley. Yeah. yeah. And now we're kind of kind of stepping back, and it's not just someone coming straight in. Now yeah. we have that, like you were saying before, to everyone, we have that process now. Another yeah. two coaches, and we can. It's the best of it's the best of the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is, and, and and that criteria is to you know because 
I think it's easy to go and meet someone, shake their hand, say, "Well, oh, no, you're, you're coach for next year." But but we, you've got to you've got to understand what our gaps are. You know, like anyone, you can watch footy and say, "Well, our gaps are we're, we're going sideways," you know, but really, really pull it apart. And okay, because because this person needs to come in and drive this change. Yeah, you know, because we obviously we're not winning, so we need it. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, and, and, and I'm just saying names there, doesn't mean but, but, you know, if, if I say like a, a Ross Lyon or, or, a, C, or, or a coach who's, who's had experience of Brad, uh, Brad Scott or whoever it is, they might be have their strengths, but, but their strengths aren't going to plug the gaps that we need now for yeah. the next two, three years. You know, or I'm not saying a Sammy Mitchell was maybe, you know, even that he might not have been able to plug those gaps. So hopefully this criteria and this assessment will be able to, to, to really filter that yeah. out and get the right person, yeah. you know? Perfect. That's awesome. Uh, what else have we got? Actually, we got a, we got Sean on. Sean, if you're ready, I'll jump you on ask a question to Licker. All right. Hey. You down, uh, yeah, I uh, just wanted to ask a quick question, just in, um, the process of, like, selection. Um, as someone that, like, watches – uh the you know the footy obviously um there's a lot of uh players um obviously won't, won't name any names and stuff um and it's not necessarily do i put them down or anything um but it's i guess the best way to explain it is um you know watching a movie but you see the same movie time and time again um is there any uh process when it comes to selection um, you know, and trying to tell the players that, you know, it's not a bad thing to go down to the twos, get confidence, come back up and play again? Yeah, look, there would be. Look, I, I'm yeah. not on, on a match committee, so I don't, um, yeah. you know, but, but, and I know what you're saying. Sometimes, you know, it's very easy, you know, you know, and I know when I was playing, I can guarantee yeah. players were like, mate, or well, members would have said, you know, drop, drop the gun, mate, you know. Um, yeah. I, that towards the end of my career, that happened to me, and and um, you know, if, if as hard as it is to swallow, you're like what you get yeah. dropped, but, but it's good because you go back and and, and you, you you get that hunger again. Okay, mate, I'm going to yeah. prove to you, Mick, oh, you're wrong, mate. I should be playing. So, so that yeah. that can work. Um, look, you know, and then obviously with, with us, you know, like like we've got to be really careful. You know, as much as being great to play some young players, we've got players there who are going to be rock stars, yeah. but but physically. You don't want to play them yet. You know, you've got to look after them because yeah. their body hammering. The last thing you want is someone to come in, yeah. have an impact two, three years, and then by twenty one they're out. You know, so you've got to be really careful there. Um, so if if you if you what you're saying is some players that maybe are playing longer than you know or should have been dropped, you've also got to think of well, you know, obviously you know yeah. by, by moving on the three guys last year that that, that some senior experience, yeah. you know, obviously our depth wasn't there this year, so yeah. sometimes. You know, and 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 then you, you you back players, right? You trust players too. Like it's like, hey, listen, I know, I know you've been great for the last two three weeks, but I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna back you this week to come out. You know, so there's there's all that that's yeah. involved. But I like, can understand how it frustrates, you know, a, a lot of a lot of supporters. Yeah, because it's also not coming from a place of um, like hatred or anything like that. Um, in fact, if anything, is coming from a place of love. Clearly, because you know you the it's. You want them to succeed. Like, there's nothing, yeah. I think, more, um, you know, there's nothing more rewarding from a you know, common supporter, obviously, like our point of view of um, seeing guys, especially because we've got a lot of father and son teams, you know, just, you know, if they see, um, if, if we see them win a premiership, I mean, that's that's going to be the best feeling ever sort of thing. So yeah. it's obviously not coming from a place of, um, yeah, hatred or anything like that. It's, like, clearly yeah. the opposite. Um yeah, but yeah, yeah it, but it's also just a thing of like knowing what the right process is for it because like obviously as I said like and I've said a million times like you know it's not coming from a place of hatred but it's um yeah but also just trying to be like you know is it worth like um like just saying like hey just have a month in the twos get some confidence up and come back in um and. Yeah. Just yeah, like because because I think uh, for memory, not that we don't. Or I, or, and I think Luke, um, he he has made it clear on his channel he doesn't like this play very much. But and it, it's the play from West Coast. But like you know, he actually went through a process through <laughs> through uh, West Coast and stuff like that. 
Um, and yeah, he was playing in the uh, the uh, I'm trying to think of the uh, well, yeah, the waffle. And yeah, yeah like, and because I had a whole documentary about it, and obviously we know how well he played as much as we hate it. Um, and yeah, I was just wondering if there's like a similar thing to where we have players like we could have that process for other players too. Yeah, ma- ma- look, we, 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 we definitely have, you know, and it's um, but again, it, it's it's hard to because you know, you know, you, you want you want to you, you want to back that player, but you got to see who's available to come through for that specific role as well, and yeah. and it's no doubt no, there's going to be decisions this year. We say, hey, you know, you know, maybe it is say for I'll use an example, Ollie can come in. But he's not quite ready yet, so, so we've got to yeah. protect him. Too. There's a bit of that as well, you know. So, but but mate, I understand it's 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 frustrating, you know. Like, yeah. you know, play, players do try their hardest out there, you know, and 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 get extremely disappointed when, when we're not winning, um, you know. But but uh, look, I, I love hearing this. I, I love I love the passion that that we've got, and and we care so much about it, you know. So, um. But uh, but now look, look, mate. Thanks, thanks, Sean. Thanks, Sean, man. No, good. Thanks, thanks, brother. Cheers, man. Uh, I saw this question. And I, I love it. Uh, uh, can you see Collingwood ever building their own stadium and turning it into their own fortress? So we see that a lot in the Premier League, where yeah, and, or just in just in soccer in general, where everyone has that. Uh, and we know Vic Park is like government owned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, mate, I, I love that idea too. You know, like just being that big powerhouse. But I, I think the AFL has so much. It's very different here, obviously, than it yeah. is to, to overseas. Yeah. So we don't have, we don't have the um, you know, the the individual billionaires who own the football yeah. clubs. You know, so so it is run by the AFL. But but I would love that. You know, I, I'd I'd love to. Imagine being able to go there and, and, and buy the MCG and, and building it as, as your own. But but I think there's something there we could do perhaps at some stage. And I know we're trying to do it at, you know, at, at, at um, the Holden Centre where, you know, we can build our own sort of museum. So I reckon we could start to do something like that. Yeah. And, and that's the aim now that we're trying to do. Yeah. Um, so... Rick says, hey, guys, big family. Big difference between a board member shooting off something stupid in the media in comparison to what you are doing now. So that was uh, that was a comment uh, in regards to, like, you know, when you said uh, the players don't want the board to come out and say yeah. something. But, and, and and I think, you know, there was a lot of talk as well where it's it's a fine line for, for you know, we don't want to hear what's going on behind, but we also we also do. And, and you know, you've done stuff with Pie Hard. Um, yeah. And that was a... a an awesome uh, interview, and they're, yeah, and they're yeah. great guys. And you know, you came out to like, uh, like it was the age and, and the Herald Sun, and, yeah, yeah. And you know, it's just, it's just a peek behind. It's a peek behind yeah. the look, look, that we need. Look, I think, as I said, I, for me, it was as as players we hated it. Okay, like, and, and I've said a number of times now, but but it got to the stage where, you know, stop stop talking shit about me and yeah. and and about our board members because it's not true. You yeah. know, we're, we're we have we've done a lot of change, you know, and 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 Eddie, anyone who was going to replace Ed, yeah, mate, good luck, yeah, 100%, you know, yeah, you know, I, I, my name got thrown. I was like, mate, no chance. I'm, I'm not going. Like, he's got the biggest shoes to fill, and he was so good for us for so long, you know. He, he, he created a lot of change, not only Collingwood but the AFL. So it was really hard, you know, and 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 Ed's, Ed's leadership style was very very different, you know, to, to a lot of ours, maybe, yeah. you know. So, but but also. His strength was PR and media, you know. Yeah. So he's going to come out all the time. Of course, yeah. strength, yeah. You know, and and not comparing, you know, whether it's Mark Hood or myself or, or Pete Murphy or Jody or Christine or um, Neil or Bridie, it, it, we've all got different strengths, and you've got to play to those strengths, yeah. You know, and awesome. and you know, we've gone from you know, you look at our leadership. We there was there was you know there's a, a big chunk of it was Eddie McGuire, Gary Pert, Mick Mulhouse. There's big big sort of personalities, you know, and then it was. You know, Eddie Maguire is Mark Anderson, who, who doesn't have that big, that, 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 that very, very good, yeah. where well, he does, but doesn't have the big PR. And then you've got Nathan Buckley, who, who his execution in the media was unbelievable, it's, it's, right? Yeah. So now Bucks is gone. And so at the moment, you've got Mark Quarter, Mark Anderson, and, and there's Harvey there, who, who don't, <laughs> they're not, they don't yeah, have that. Yeah, but, know, exactly but in terms saying. of their strengths, but they're good at what they do. Unbelievable, yeah. right? So, you know, so, so again, look at the, you know, the gaps is, is you know, is, um, What's what's more important is what's more important for Colin. You know, this is what we need to sort of talk about, think about. Is it we want a big, big president, you know, and and we want a big CEO, we want a big, or do we 
try to identify the gaps and bring the right people in to fucking win games of football, yeah. win premierships. You know what I mean? So, so it's 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 getting that mix right. Yeah, you and, know? And, and it may oh, it's fa- I love it. it's fascinating. You know, and even the whole list management in the food department and but it's it's we're in for for some good times, man. I'm telling you. And and that, that's a that's a good point with like you know with Eddie being main PR because one of the criticisms and we and we talked yeah. about it before was you know when Buckley was having that um. Yeah, that, that press conference yeah. was, you know, Mark Corder wasn't Mark Corder wasn't yeah. there, and we know that we're we're so attuned to Eddie being front and center, and, yeah. and we love Eddie, right? Yeah. Yeah. And we're so but we're so attuned to him being front and center for all these sort of big big things. So when someone is isn't there, isn't yeah. there you go, yeah. oh, hang on a second. But, so they but they don't, you know, some supporters, you know, or, or the media as well, because yeah. they were saying it. The media was saying, like, yeah, I, where but was you, Mark you Corder? just turned your head and, and he was there. Well. You know? You know, I, I was there. I was in that room, and there was, and, and you know, you got, you got again. I think you know, this is my, you know, is, is my thoughts around it. Is the border behind the scene? We're behind the scenes. Yeah. You know, these guys, your CEO, the coach, at the time, and and your football director, your, your football manager. You know, but literally a meter across, you know, with, wasn't on screen. Was was there was Mark Corder, there was Pete Murphy himself. So it's sort of, and we're there to support. You know, like. I mean, but thank you. If Eddie was there, mate, he, yeah, he would have been front and center, and he would have nailed it. Yeah, you know what I mean, that, that, that's his strength, you yeah. know. So, um, it's it's sort of horses for courses, right? You know. So you you've you, again, it's play. Look at the gaps and play to your strengths. Yeah, beautiful. All right, do you want to um, look? You, you know what I'll do? I mean, we can go on. I'll go on for another five or so minutes. I do need to take my son somewhere, yeah. but. Um, and then look, I'm not sure what you normally do, look, but th- th- some of these questions, if you want, I, I can yeah. I can email and answer. Yeah, back yeah, sweet. I'll, um, if you yeah, like, yeah, I can I can go through and and I'll I'll also um, I'll chuck it up on Instagram where you can ask a question and, and I'll pick a couple and and the same thing on uh, on Twitter as as well and and, yeah. and stuff like that. Uh, but is there anything you want to say to to before before we send off any? Yeah, oh look, just um, um, um extremely grateful you know always has as a player you know it's a love seeing guys at training and um the families at training and that so i'm just really grateful for the support that, that you guys are giving this football club i know it's it's tough at the moment and um but just but just you know continue to support us there's a lot of fun coming our way you know we're, we're doing a lot of work behind the scenes um as, as i keep saying i think the noise is distracting outside of Collingwood, you know, and, and I hope we don't get too sucked in it. Internally, we're rock solid, and we've got good processes and, and, and good governance now. Now, and and, and um, creating a lot of change. So, um, um, you know, the, the performance side we'll continue to monitor and continue to look at. And, and, and the most important part for us at the moment is let's get the best coach available. You know, so but thank you for your support. Um, you know, and and, and um, you know, I'll, be, I'll I'll jump back on whether it's a month or so. Yeah, hundred percent. And, and when, when we do pick the coach, if you like, I'm happy to come back on and tell you why and, and what the strengths I thought would be great for us. Um, but yeah, but thank you. I will get to these questions too yeah, at, at at some stage. But no, I just want to say a big thank you for for doing this. It's just yeah, you know, our pleasure, uh, man. It's absolutely it's ridiculous. Love I would never, never have thought about it in in uh, you know in all my life. Yeah. But um, and everyone like you know, Twitter and, and Instagram and they're all you know very appreciative of of you and, and you know even just coming on, you can see all the all the comments on there. Yeah. But um, man, thank you so much. Had a bit of fun, but yeah, thanks, man. Any uh. Any sort of uh, any sort of coaching hints? Tips? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, mate. I, I can tell you who's who we've spoken to a couple of times and has presented to um, the panel and is leading the race at the moment is Ted Lasso. Oh, um, did you see my tweet? I tweeted about that. I'm like, you yeah, know? I need Ted. Someone says someone from the organ. Oh man, that's yeah, awesome. Hey, my dad's gonna love that. If you guys haven't seen it, how good is it? The series of Ted it Lasso. It is amazing. It. It's amazing. It's an Apple Plus series about an American. Uh, uh, American coach, uh, NFL coach, going through to to the Premier League, and it is one of the best shows going around at the moment. I am um, Luke. Luke Ball was was he's doing a doing some media today, and he was and he was just sort of asking, you know, um, we're talking about, it. and I said, if they ask you to say we're getting Ted Lasso, <laughs> so good, so good, Licker. Thank you so much, no, thanks, brother. Thanks, guys. See you All later. Right. See you guys, supers. See, see us. Thank you. Um.